started right after high school and was answering phones about computer orders um, and decided that I really liked what the guys were doing in the back with the repairs, so I convinced them to let me go back there and learn how to do that. So they taught me at the bench how to do printers, monitors, uh, computer repairs. Um, and I worked at the stores area for about nine years. Then I found a position at NCSA where I could do desktop support and support Larry Smart, who was at the time the director and founder of the NCSA facility. Um, and I worked directly with him um, and grew into a management role through that where I learned how to do things like um, work with the access grid and the multicast technologies, um, general networking kind of things, uh, computer repairs and such, managing people um, involved until um, about thir for that about 13 years. And then I became the director of technology services at the computer science department where we run all of the IT for the uh, the department and are currently in process of doing shared services for the college. So I'll be moving from a CS department specific role into a college-wide infrastructure role. The people that I think helped me get to where I am today uh, really are the people on the supercomputing conference committee. They gave me jobs and let me grow and taught me new things and how to communicate with people, how to work with um, organizations to get you know the, the things you need. They let me do everything from when I started doing access grid stuff to helping with the infrastructure all the way up to running the network one year. Mm -hmm. And just working with them has really made me a more rounded person. When they asked me to chair Synet uh, in Reno, I was totally taken back. I, it was such an honor for them to even consider me to, for that position. Um, it was nerve-wracking and scary, uh, but it was, it was just a wonderful experience. There were so many people there just to help. They're so knowledgeable. Um, it took about 125 volunteers to put it all together. Uh, they had millions of dollars worth of equipment that was being donated by these vendors that absolutely trusted us with their equipment. Uh, and, and we put it all together. Uh, one of the snippets that we used during the year I was there was it takes a full year to plan and build. It takes a month to actually do the physical setup. It takes a week to run it. And it took one day to tear it all down and ship it back. The most challenging thing about this position was that I uh, had to deal with people that knew way more about the network than I could even imagine. Um, they, knew, they knew who to go to to contact to get the fiber into the building. They knew who to contact to make sure they could get to the POPs where they, they run things, uh, how to connect to the bigger world network. Um, that was a challenge because I didn't have the knowledge to to make sure that they knew they were doing the right thing, I had to trust and research myself. So that was probably one of the most challenging mentally. Um, during the conference, the most challenging thing was um, the power outage. The first job I had at supercomputing, the first official job, I had been with the committee for a while just doing odds and ends you know, thanks. But the first official role I had was I worked, uh, followed Jennifer Teig von Hoffman around. Uh, she's a fabulous lady. And I followed her around to do the access grid portion of the conference. It was very new when we started that. Um, and basically, it's multi point contacts with video. Um, we set up a program. Uh, when I did it, the year I did it, we tried to get as many of the continents as we could. We got six out of the seven connected all at one time. Uh, so I felt that was a pretty big win. Um, then uh, I've done other things that were as, you know, as back, back scenes as you can get as AV, you know, making sure we coordinated. We got screens and projectors and the cabling was all there and all that, all the way up to, again, Synet. Um, I co-chaired infrastructure 
uh, with Eric Sills, who is also awesome. Everybody on the committee's really great. Uh, this year I'm doing exhibits for them, which has been a nice change of pace. It's an actual program um, where before it's been kind of the back end's infrastructure piece. This is an outward facing program. So that's been a challenge as well, just to shift gears a little for that. The computing world is definitely a male dominated area. Um, when I originally started 24 years ago, uh, the technicians that I worked with were all men, uh, but my boss was a woman. And since I pretty much put myself out there and, and asked to learn, they hesitantly kind of started teaching me things. They were not interested in having a girl in the back doing repairs. That was not something they wanted. Um, but when the boss says, do this, you do this, whether you like it or you don't. Um, so that was an interesting challenge. 24 years later, I, you know, I'm so used to just working with all the guys. I don't even consider that aspect of it anymore. Um, there's quite a lot more women that are starting to come into the field. Uh, so, you know, there's starting to be a little bit more balance in the world. So, um, you know, I could see where it was an issue way back, but for now, you know, it's just a common every day. That's how it is. My advice to young women, and that I see it all the time, we have uh, lots of girls in, in uh, high school and junior high that I, I talk to. I always encourage them, you know, don't worry about the fact that, you know, you don't, it's a male dominated field. You know, it's, they're just as smart and they're just as capable, and if you put your mind to it, you can do whatever you want. In my free time, I like to do triathlons. Um, I like to do the swimming, the biking, and the running. I've been doing them for about seven years now. Um, it's been something I've always wanted to do, but I never learned to swim. So I took up swimming at late stage in the game. And it's a fabulous exercise. You get to meet all kinds of great people. Um, triathlons are great because unlike marathons, marathons you do the same thing for hours on end. Mm -hmm. Triathlons are great because you can swim and while you're swimming you're thinking, just get me out of the water. And then you get to go to transition and you get on your bike and you ride your bike and you're thinking, I made it through the swim, that was great. And then uh, you get off the bike and you hit the run and you go, okay, it's a little farther. And it's a nice break. You get all, you know, you get to change it up. It's not mundane. So I like those, uh, and it keeps you physically fit.